In this presentation, we will calculate the amortization of a premium and record the journal entry related to the premium and the pain of interest on a bond issued at a premium. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Information will be on the left. We're gonna enter that into our general journal and then post that to our worksheet. The worksheet will be in order. We've got the assets in green, the liabilities in orange, the revenue in light blue, or the equity in light blue, revenue and expenses, income statement accounts in dark blue. The debits are positive, credits are negative. The debits minus the credits equals zero, indicating we are in balance. We currently have revenue 700,000, sales, 700 revenue minus zero expenses at this time. This is meant just to give us something in balance so that when we record these transactions, we get some idea of something started in balance and what the effects will be on the accounting equation, individual accounts. So we have uh, issued the bond here. So the bond has been issued for 270,000 when it had a face amount of 240. That means there's a difference in 30,000. That's where we start. On the books, we've got 240. That's what we're gonna pay back at the end of the term, uh, 15 years in this case, 30 periods because it's semi-annual. And then we have this discount, meaning the carrying amount, of course, is the 270, what we actually uh, got for the bond. So the carrying amount will equal what we got paid for the bond at the point of the issuance of the bond. So now what we need to do is uh, record the interest and the amortization. There's gonna be two things there that we deal with. One is how much we pay in interest, kind of like rent, just like on the loan, rent on the use of the money. And the other is to get rid of this amortized premium on this premium. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna reduce the premium and record the difference to the uh, bond interest expense. Why? Because this premium is really a result of interest. It's really a result of the difference between the market rate and the bond rate, or that's gonna be the presumed difference or the reason that this is the case, the reason for the premium. And therefore, we're gonna reduce it to uh, the interest expense as, uh, as we go, as we make payments. So we'll do that with a straight line amortization. This is gonna be a simplified amortization method. It's not an effective, it's not the effective method, which is the preferred generally accepted accounting principle method, but it gives us a really good idea of what we're doing. It lines up well to uh, how we've seen amortization starting, including similar to a depreciation problem, and it can be used if the difference between the interest on the effective and the straight line method is small uh, or immaterial. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, we're gonna take this uh, original premium amount, uh, the unamortized amount, we're gonna put that here. I'm gonna do that with a little formula. I'm gonna take this amount, so I'm gonna say negative of this number, now don't pick up the ending number or you can have a problem once we do journal entries. So pick beginning number or you can just type in the 30,000. And then the carrying amount is gonna be these two added, the 270, 240 plus 30. Now I'm gonna do that with a little formula again which can be a little bit confusing, but it's gonna be negative, or we could say negative sum, meaning I'm gonna sum up these two numbers and then flip the sign. So there's the 270, you can just type in 270 in this one. Okay, so then we're going to calculate the amortized amount. Now the amount that is gonna be amortized is simply going to be, under a straight line method, the 30,000 divided by the, by the number of periods. There's 15 years and it's every two years. So that would be 15 times two or 30. You can also think about it if it's helpful to say, okay, it's 30,000 divided by the number of years which is 15, and then say two times a year, divided by two, 1,000. So we'll do that here. We're in M4 equals, and we could say uh, 30,000 
divided by uh, 15, divided by 2, or just divided by 30, gives us the 1,000. The unamortized premium then is going to be equal to the prior unamortized premium minus the amount we amortized this period. Or we do, and that means the carrying amount then is going to be equal to, I'm going to say negative of this 240. Again, don't pick this one up on the right, pick this one up on, on the left. I'm going to, that flips the sign plus the 29,000 and enter. So now we're going to have uh, the 270 went down by the 1,000. This will now be the carrying amount or the uh, adding these two up after we record this amortization. If we continue to do this in M5, I'm going to just say this will be the same because it's straight line. That 1,000. Uh, the unamortized premium then is going to be equal to the prior unamortized premium minus the current amortized amount. And then the carrying amount is always going to be equal or negative, flipping the sign of this number, taking that and flipping the sign, plus the 28,000, and enter. Now I'm going to do this all the way down, and this should then go down to zero, and this should go down to just our 240,000 at the end of 30 time periods, 15 years, twice a year. I'm going to do this one time with an autofill and see if it does what we want it to do. If it doesn't, we'll make any calculations and then see if we can autofill this all the way down. So if we highlight these items or select them and then put our cursor on autofill and drag it down one time, we'll see this, this does what we want. That looks right. This looks right. This number looks different. So if I look at that, that looks different. So what happened? It brought the 240 down and I don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna delete it, highlight and delete this and do it again. I'm gonna select this and what I want is, I want this to move down, but not this. So I'm going to make this an absolute reference. You can do that by just putting your cursor between the H and the 6 and pushing F4 on the keyboard, or by adding a dollar sign before the H and a dollar sign before the 6, just telling it, don't move it down <laughs> when, we, when we copy it down. So I'm going to hit Enter, and then highlight this whole thing again, test it one more time, autofill down one time, and see if it does what we want. This looks right, that looks right, this now looks right. So now we can autofill all the way down. So I'm gonna highlight these cells, put our cursor on autofill, and go all the way down. And then it does what we would expect. This now, the unamortized going to zero at the end of 30 time periods. And this uh, amount, the carrying amount being 240, equaling the 240 bond amount that we'll then pay at the end of the 30 year time period. Notice we're jumping, of course, in time every six months. It's gonna be you know, a new year every, every, two period, every two payment types. Okay, so now we're gonna go over here and we're gonna record the journal entry. Now we're gonna record the journal entry for two things that are happening. One, we're making the interest payment. We're actually gonna pay cash. And two, we're amortizing this amount. We're gonna do that, as is traditionally the case, with one journal entry. So first we'll calculate the interest we're gonna pay, asking our first question, is cash effective? It is, we're paying interest. So we're gonna say that cash is gonna be credited. Let's do that first, we're gonna copy it. We'll put that on the bottom in C4, right click and paste one, two, three. Now the amount that we're gonna pay is gonna be the amount in the contract, or 240,000, the face amount, times the contract rate, not the market rate. 0.08 in our case, that would be for a year, but they're paid semi-annually. So we'll divide that by two. There's what we'll pay. The other way you can see that, you'll often see someone calculated as 0.08 yearly rate divided by two, six months rate, times the 240. Two ways to, to see that. We're gonna do that one more time in E4. I'm gonna say negative to flip the sign, 240 thousand times 0.08 contract rate divided by two okay so there is that now we're going to amortize the premium so here's the premium going to copy the premium put that in c5 right click and paste one two three now the question you'll pot you'll always have is should i debit or credit the premium and if you have a trial balance it's easy because i can see that okay that's a credit i need it to go down we'll do the opposite thing to it if you don't have a trial balance then you got to just know whether that's a debit or credit 
and then figure out what you got to do to it. Uh, one way to think about it is you could say, well, the bond payable is kind of like the uh, kind of like the sticker price if you were buying something. Uh, you could think of it that way. And uh, if you're talking about something that's at a premium, then it must be higher than that price, meaning we're going to increase it doing the same thing to it as a liability, which is a credit. So this must then be a credit balance if it's a premium and therefore we do the opposite thing to it to make it go down a debit. In, the, in other words, if this is like the sticker price when uh, you're purchasing something, if it were a discount, then this account below, if it were a discount, would have to be making it go down. It would have to be a contra account and that would have to be a debit. So however you memorize it, the premium is going to be a credit balance account, a discount is going to be a debit balance account. If we're reducing the premium, a credit balance account, we do the opposite thing to it, a debit. We always do the opposite thing to it, but because this is a credit balance, the opposite thing is a debit. So in D5, I'm going to say this is going to be equal to that 1000 in our amortization table. Okay, so then the difference is going to go to interest expense. So I'm going to be copying interest expense. Expenses are always going to go up in the debit direction, just like if it was a loan. Right click and paste one, two, three. We're going to record the difference here. The uh, credit minus the debit or 8,600 debit. We'll do that with our sum formula, our plug formula, our negative SUM. Double click the sum. I would just go from the bottom to the top because that thing's in the way. Or you could move this if you want and enter. There we have it. Note uh, that we, we are not like in order in terms of debits on tops. I built this in whatever way makes the most sense. Uh, so that's what I recommend doing. If you want to reorder it to put the two debits on top, then that's okay. If you want to keep it out of order because you think it's better or easier to go back and look at at a later time, I would recommend doing so. Also note that you could break this out into two transactions. You could say we paid cash and debit interest expense and then separately think about the amortization of the discount, meaning you're going to debit the bond payable and credit interest expense, which could look confusing because then you would credit the interest expense at that point, which is not normal. You don't usually increase or you know decrease an expense. But the reason you're doing it is because these two things are kind of linked. They are kind of linked together. And that's why the one journal entry is typically how you see it uh, done most places. But if um, if it helps to break it out to think through it then that's fine as well okay so here we go we're gonna post this here's the bond interest here's the bond interest on our trial balance we're here in I 12 where we're gonna say equals and point to that 8600 bringing the balance up to 8600 putting us out of balance bringing net income down then we're gonna go to the cash here's the cash in I 3 we're gonna say equals point to the 9006 bringing the cash down and then we're going to go to the uh, premium on the bond and here's the premium we're going to be in i7 equals pointing to that 1000 bringing the premium down notice no effect on the bond payable because we're not paying any principal off until the end of the bond so that's what we have uh, this should match then over here we've got the 29,000 unamortized here we got the 240 and the 29 giving a carrying amount of 269 matching this amount here. Now we're going to do the, the next one. It's going to be the same type of transaction just to show us two transactions. I'll highlight this to show us where we will be at on the amortization table. So same thing. We're going to say is cash affected. Six months later we're going to pay this and I know all, all obviously other activity would happen in the trial bounce between these points but we're just going to record it here so you can see uh, the effect on those accounts on the trial balance. So in other words, it's six months later. So we obviously there would be other activity in the trial balance happening. We're just here focusing in on these accounts and we want to see something in balance at the beginning and at the end. So we're going to put this here in C8, right click and paste one, two, three, home tab, alignment, increase in denting, same amount, same calculation, negative uh, 240,000 face amount of the bond times the contract rate on the bond divided by two. Then we're going to, to uh, do the same thing to the bond premium, reducing it. We're going to do that by putting our cursor in D9 equals, and we're going to 
pull this number here. It's the same 1,000 from our table. Well, it's not the same 1,000, but they're all 1,000 because it's a straight line method. And then we're gonna say the interest will be up top once again. So same transaction. We're gonna use our negative sum equals, or negative sum. And then I'm gonna go from the bottom to the top, or you can move this thing out of the way and enter. Now let's record this out. Here's the bond interest. Here's the bond interest here. We're in the middle column. We're gonna double click, go to the end of it, plus point to that 8,600, bringing the balance up, putting us out of balance, bringing net income down. Then we'll go to cash. Here's cash. Here's cash on the trial balance. We're in I3. Double click, go to the end of it, plus point to that 9,006, bringing that down. And then here's the bond, the premium on the bond. Here's the premium on the bond. Double click on I7, go to the end of it, plus point to that 1,000, bringing it down. So as you can see, we're, we're bringing the uh, carrying or the unamortized amount 28 matches here and then if we highlight those two the carrying amount 268 matches 268 here and that of course will be the case as we go down this will then go down to zero at the end of 30 time periods leaving us with the 240 which will then pay uh, at the end of the bond term so just note that the bond payable the principal amount is not going as we pay interest we're only paying the rent on the money uh, and reducing the, the premium.